I like to think that I do a lot of things creatively in safety training, but one of my favorite things that had to become a part of every crane operator refresher training that I did was a hand signaling game. And so I had a list of hand signals that I would provide to one person, one by one, and each of those people were partnered with another person. And so they were standing across from each other where they could hand signal each other during the game. And so there were judges on either side. Um, two people always had to sit out around to volunteer to be the judge. And so it was a game of speed and also a game of accuracy. So the first pair to win um, the round would be the pair that it was able to communicate their hand signal and have their partner across the way shout out the answer correctly. So the team that would have the most correct answers, we kind of would do a play down mode where any group that didn't get the signal answered correctly would have to go sit down. So then we'd get down to the wire. And so we'd either run it where the team that had the most points or the team that was the last one standing would be the winners. And so the hand signal game winners would win. Um, it was a fabulous prize <laughs> uh, because I don't have the budget to keep out doing myself for prizes. You have to get creative with prizes too. And so the winners of the hand signal game, they get to go first in line for lunch or whatever the snack was or have a slightly longer break. So I would um, change the, the winning prize depending on what the training situation was. Gosh, the most fun I ever had training was when I was in the Marine Corps, I got a special assignment to uh, program in training and this really cool setup they had. Uh, it was like uh, an indoor shooting range and all the guns were set up to pneumatic air pressure so that when you pull the trigger, it would uh, it would recoil. So anyway, I could program anything I want on the screen, and you know it's like a desert setting on the screen, and there's tanks and helicopters, and you know people are practicing shooting them, and then things would blow up, and it was a really cool uh, device or uh, you know whatever system. And just for fun, I decided I would put a little yellow VW Beetle just driving through the desert and just have it do all kinds of crazy stunts and maneuvers and things. And I, I could see on my screen where everybody was actually aiming and shooting. And uh, it was pretty funny because there was all kinds of stuff to shoot at, but when that VW Beetle showed up, everybody started shooting at it. And I gave it too many hit points, so it was almost indestructible. And then everyone was shooting at it everywhere, and eventually it blew up and everyone cheered. So I like to set the tone for my training as light, fun, enjoyable, but really impactful. And so one way that I like to do that is I'll pull people out and kind of get them on their toes right off the bat. Uh, when we're training the topic of work planning, I will pull somebody randomly out and put them in front of this jar of thousands of beads. And then I will ask them to pull out 15 round red, no that's purple, 15 round red beads like this one and then spell their name with these tiny little black letters and then place those on this plate. The catch is you can't pour the beads out, so you have to pull them out by hand, and you're wearing these really cumbersome gloves, and of course the rest of your PPE, some scratched up safety glasses that you can't really see out of. Uh, it really gets people thinking about the communication around how we plan jobs, making sure that our people have tools that they need, and, and really talking out the process before you go and try to do something and scramble and realize that you've got the wrong stuff. There is actually a solution to this problem, and if you think you know what it is, hit me up in the comments. One of my favorite creative ways to do a safety meeting is my safety meeting about communication. And I bring up an, a participant and I blindfold them and I have them make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich just based upon the directions that they're giving me, and then I act it out. The crazy part is you have to be over exuberant to uh, what you're doing. So when they say open up the bread, you rip it open and bread goes flying everywhere. And it's just a great opportunity to show that clear communication is so vital in what we do in safety and what we do in business as a whole. So give it a shot, give me a message. I'll be more than happy to tell you the whole plan for how do you do it. So making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with peanut butter and jelly all over your hands, that's my creative way to do a safety meeting. Have an amazing day. Hi guys, it's Jade Nelson here. So I came up with something pretty cool that I thought really increases engagement, um, especially safety engagement in the workplace. And that idea that I'm going to share with you right now is a safety escape room. 
So there are three steps to creating a really good safety escape room. The first one is create a great storyline. Second, you want to make sure that you create a great outline of clues. And third, you want to make sure that you set up the scene really good. Um, for the scene, it was around Halloween time when I did the safety escape room. And I set up a scene that was like pretty much used a lot of Halloween props. We had a ghost named Complacency because our escape room was all about escaping complacency um, in the workplace. So we talked a lot about what exactly complacency is and why it is so dangerous um, in the workplace. And then the whole thing was escape complacency. So we had all of the clues, like with the outline of clues, we put, um, we use a lot of stuff for general industry, like PPE and lockout, tagout. Um, it was actually, it turned out to be a really, really good event. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because I'm super passionate about safety and increasing engagement.